Welcome to the next lesson in our complete intro to rendering in Blender course. Quick reminder, we're offering the entire first unit of our course for free for a limited time here on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. Let's go ahead and continue with the file we were working on in the previous lesson where we set up our camera. And right at the end there, at the upper right hand corner, we set the viewport to render mode. And we see that we're looking dead on to the monkey mesh and we have some sort of light source coming from the upper right hand corner and the face is largely in the shade. Now, before we move on to the next step of the rendering checklist, it's important to talk about the render engine. So a render engine is how Blender will calculate the pixels that we're going to see in the final rendering. So it takes into account the lighting, the camera angle, the mesh, and then it tries to figure out what each and every pixel should look like. So if this was our final rendering that we're looking at here, the pixels to the upper right hand corner are a lighter color of gray. The ones here in the middle are a very dark gray nearing on black, and we have various shades in between. And Blender has to calculate each of those pixels to show us here in the viewport in the rendered view, just the same as if we had clicked to render the final image. I'll hit escape since we don't need to do that here. Now we can set the render engine to a couple of different types. So over in the right hand side where you see the camera icon, that's actually for the render properties. Go ahead and click on it. And you'll notice here next to render engine, it says Eevee. So Eevee is the default render engine. It's a real-time rendering engine, which means that the results are nearly instant or given to you in real time, which is a lot like a video game engine. So if you've played video games or you've seen them before, the more realistic looking ones are actually considered real-time renderings where they can show you light, shadow, reflection, but they have to take some shortcuts in order to give you those calculations quickly or instantly. So as you're playing a video game or as you're viewing something here in Blender using the Eevee engine, it needs to be able to show you something the moment that you get a new view on it. So for example, if you orbit right now, you notice that as I'm orbiting around, I'm immediately seeing whatever I would see if I rendered from this angle of view. And that's what Eevee can do. So it can give you instant or real time calculations of what you're looking at. But then in order to do that, it needs to take a lot of shortcuts. And those shortcuts can often come at the expense of realism. So if you click on the icon to look back through the camera, you'll notice that you can't see a lot of detail in this monkey face right now. And so I happen to know that one of the shortcuts Eevee is taking is it's not bouncing the light around the model. So you can't see how these parts of the monkey face would actually be illuminated if this was more realistic. But it is worth pointing out that in many cases, Eevee will provide good enough results for what you're looking for. And we'll talk more about those cases in a future set of lessons. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to the entire first unit of one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and now, back to the lesson. Now, let's go over to where it says Render Engine, drop down the menu. We're gonna ignore Workbench, that's something that's really just for when we're in working mode. And we're gonna pick Cycles, go ahead and click on Cycles here. And you'll notice that this re-renders, or it starts to change what it looks like. And at first you see it looks a little bit noisy and pixelated, but actually what's going on with Cycles is that because it's a physically based renderer, it's using real world physics to determine as best it possibly can what the realistic result would look like. So you notice that these little pixelated things I can especially see in the ear, they're starting to go away. And what's happening is Blender renders the image and then re-renders it and re-renders it and re-renders it again. And it's constantly refining the rendering so that anything that looks noisy and pixelated gets smoother and smoother and smoother as it calculates exactly how the light would bounce around the model and illuminate and then change the color of certain pixels in the final image. And so one of the things we can see is we picked up some detail in this left ear. We see some more detail around the eye sockets, the mouth. I can even barely make out that there's some sort of a nose here. So with cycles, we're gonna get something that's higher quality, more realistic, 
but it comes at the expense of time. So while we saw this result fairly quickly here, this is a really simple model. And what will happen on more complicated things is that cycles will take a longer time to render it. Not only here in the viewport, but when we go to render and render our image, cycles will take far longer than Eevee to create the same image. Again, it'll be higher quality and more realistic, but it will come at the expense of much more time. I'll hit the escape key here on my keyboard. We don't need to render this image right now. So I just like to point out those two different engines. For the purposes of this example, we're gonna use cycles because I really wanna to touch on some of the more realistic qualities that we can produce using the cycles render engine. But it is worth noting if you're on a slower computer or you're working on a different project and just following along with these lessons, if cycles starts to bog you down, so as you orbit around, notice how this gets really pixelated and kind of jumps around, that cycles re-rendering every single time you navigate around and do something here in the 3D space. If cycles starts to bog you down, then I recommend that you switch it to Eevee, then go ahead and work as you would normally, and then later on in a future lesson, when we're ready to render the final image, you would switch your render engine back to cycles. One reason for keeping it on cycles all the way through is that as you make your changes, you'll know that what you're looking at here in the viewport is more or less exactly what you're going to get when you render out the final image. Whereas if you keep it on Eevee, you could be fooled into thinking, gosh, that, that shadowing isn't working quite right, when in actuality, that's just Eevee taking a shortcut. So keep it on cycles if you can tolerate it, if that's what you're gonna use for the final rendering, and that is what we're going to use for this project. But just know that at any moment, if you're getting tired of how laggy it gets, you can always flip this back over to Eevee. And again, there's so much more to know about cycles. And if I flip this back to Eevee, there's so much more to know about Eevee that we can see all of these different menu items here. But we're going to cover that in a future set of lessons. For right now, just important to know the difference between the two and that we'll be using cycles for the final rendering. So if you can have it on that for now, great. If not, Eevee now, and I'll remind you to switch it to cycles later. Then you can go ahead and click on the camera to look back through the camera view. And once you feel comfortable with the difference between those two, you're ready to move on to the next lesson. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending. Thank <laughs> you.